Good afternoon, uh, almost good evening. I know it's getting darker earlier now. Welcome to episode 891. And the topic today is about spiritual superiority. And I'm going to speak about this because, frankly, it's getting really, it's really ticking me off. <laughs> um, and I explain what it means, and also you may be suffering from it without even realizing it. Oh my God. Before I get into that and, and expose all of this stuff, let me choose myself and explain what I'm about. Um, hi, my name is Barry Selby. You haven't seen my broadcast before. But if you've seen this broadcast, you've probably seen my name somewhere around here, so you know it's me. Um, I am an inspirational speaker most of the time. I'm a spiritual guide a lot of the time. And I'm also a relationship and love expert. I'm an author of the best-selling book, 50 Ways to Love Your Lover, a book for singles and couples, men and women, that rocks personally. I think it's really great. That's why I keep promoting it. Um, I've actually got people telling me they like it too. And I'm also help women create balance in love, life, and business. Um, that's because I'm a passionate champion for the divine feminine, which is what informs my work. And also what started these talks almost three years ago now, called Messages for the Masculine Inspiring a Feminine Heart. So today we're going to talk about spiritual stuff, in particular spiritual superiority. And I, I was playing with that term, um, I almost was going to call it spiritual arrogance, that's probably a more profound, profa uh, perfunctory, it's a blunter way of saying it, because this is what the thing is. And I've been experiencing it a lot over the last several years, and I'm watching my own internal compass with it. So I want to talk about it a bit more, because maybe there's something you're dealing with, or maybe somebody you know is dealing with it. I'm also some ideas how to cure it too, by the way, and it's actually very simple. So let me frame it first so you understand what I'm talking about. Because I've talked in the past about what I call spiritual um, bypass and also spiritual saran wrap, which is what the term Lisa Nichols came up with, for people who don't do the work. They just like say, it's all fine, it's all fine, and it's, it's this sort of um, refusal to deal with stuff. That's the lower level <laughs> of this hierarchy of arrogance. <clears throat> because it is arrogant. I'll explain in a minute why. What I'm talking about, though, is the people who, basically, when they're doing certain things, maybe they are a yoga, a passionate yoga yogi or yoga student, or they're a tantra expert, or they're a, a minister at a church, even, or they're something else they're doing. Maybe, they, maybe they've gone vegan. <laughs> I mean, it could be any range of things that are they're talking about it. But when people do certain things, and when they start to judge other people based on their own perspective... There's something wrong with this picture. Because the thing about spirituality for me, and, I, and I've been studying stuff for a long time, and I'm still learning, so I'm, no, I'm not saying I'm an expert or I'm a, or a guru, and I'm certainly not going to actually superior about this. But I'll tell you a little story about that in a moment. Um, but I'm aware that people are, are very caught up in a thing about when they achieve certain levels of awareness, they're going to be better, they're going to be special, they're going to feel okay, they're going to value themselves, and all this different stuff that they'll do when they get there. And what happens when they do get there, oftentimes, for some of these people, they're very attached to their ego about, do, which is all, well, I hate to, <laughs> this is the problem right there. When you're doing spiritual work and you're growing spiritually, if your ego is invested on any level, you're in trouble. Because spiritual work as a teaching, as a matter of course, is meant to be, is meant to be um, I don't want to say removing, destroying, it's, it's like ignoring the ego. It's meant to be superseding the ego, so to speak. So spiritual study, spiritual teaching, spiritual work is meant to bring you back to a place of self-awareness. And of course, this is through my filter, so it may be inaccurate. But my belief is it's about coming back to a sense of spiritual awareness so you can recognize that one, we're all connected, so there is no up or down, better or worse. Two, there is always more to learn because it's a never-ending infinite path. And three, the best place to practice spirituality is from a place of humility. And this has been a lesson I've been given, gifted, smacked around with, upset by, challenged by over the years myself. So I know this lesson very well. Yeah, I think I need to, okay, yeah. I was starting if I need to tell a story or not. There's, there's one, one story just showed up right away to talk about. So, so you know my own path. I've been, let me go back to the beginning. <laughs> um, I went through my own spiritual crisis, spiritual awakening in my teens. It wasn't an epiphany, it was resentment, <laughs> just to be clear. It was, resentment, it was more about, I didn't fit, that was the thing that was coming up for me. I was bar mitzvah, bar yes, I'm raised Jewish. I was bar mitzvah at the age of 13, and right at the time I was having my bar mitzvah, I remember looking back from the altar at the audience and feeling like I didn't fit. It was supposed to be a rite of passage into manhood. That's what bar mitzvahs for men is, for boys are supposed to be. It's like your journey when you're 13, you go from boy to man, like without any education or any understanding. 
That really screwed me up a lot too, but that's a whole other story. But the recognition was when I got through that point, I recognized that what was going on didn't fit me. The Jewish teachings, and in fact, any, any religious teachings just didn't fit me. I didn't understand, I didn't belong to these things. I didn't connect to these things. And it was really kind of frankly disturbing. When I basically started looking for something to feed my soul, I had to come across, because I was spending my teen years working at a bookstore in London, I started, I was, I was actually drawn to, voracious, drawn, drawn to science fiction and became a voracious reader. And I read, I read five, six hundred books in, in a matter of a few years, enough to fill me for a lifetime. But what it did is it gave me a premise and a framework to understand what I believed is the way life worked. It wasn't spiritual, but it was transcendent of the human experience. So it was, it was spirituality for one or another word. It wasn't called that to me. But then fast forward into um, the early 80s, 84, 85. And that was when I first dipped into the seminar, personal growth teachings. And I'll tell you about another time. I talked about it before. But in the middle of, in the beginning of that, I also found a spiritual teaching or a spiritual group that I started, that I dumped, jumped into because when they were talking about what they were teaching, it matched my, my understanding of science fiction in the sense is all the principles I was, I'd sort of adopted as like, this is the way life works from science fiction, fit this spiritual teaching close enough. So I dived into that teaching for about 10, how many years was in there? 10, 11 years, so like from 85 to 95, so 10 years, 10, 11 years. All the way through that time, I was doing the practices and was learning the different levels of initiation and teaching and such. And what was happening, I was aware of, was the people who were higher up in the teaching were arrogant SOBs. They were ego, ego, egotistical and, and, and people say, so it's okay, they're doing the works. So like, no, they weren't. They were like, look at my position. I've got a new ranking, I'm better than you. Which is not what spirituality is in my book. So that was one of those things that came up. At the same time, I found myself very disillusioned with the leadership of the spiritual teaching. And in fact, I was, um, now there were some, once wasn't, wasn't much conspiracy, but there were certainly some news reports that were scandalous about this organization. So I was already giving myself some distance from it. But I basically got clear that I was feeling that I wanted to find something else. Like I, I was on the spiritual journey learning and growing. That side, I took a side detour basically to Marianne Williamson. This is back in like 91, 92. And I started going to Course in Miracles. She was teaching in Santa Monica way before she got really big and certainly before she was running for office and then for presidency. But I got to meet, I got to hang out with her and study with her like 92, 93, 94, roughly. And then I started, I got drawn, I'm going to say the whole story because it's going to take way too long, but I ended up going to Agape in 94. And yes, okay, I'm glad you can relate, Mary, yes. Um, so anyway, so 94 I started going to Agape because I wanted to hear the music. That was why I went, because my friends who I was in, studying in my master's program said, you've got to come to Agape, the music's great, there's a choir. I'm like, music, choir? I was in the spiritual teaching that wasn't giving me any joy on the music level. So I went to Agape to check it out, fell in love with the music, and then fell in love with the teaching, and Reverend Michael became my teacher. That was 25 years ago. And I've been going ever since, and I'm, I've been on the path, became a practitioner in 2000, all the different teachings. What I want to tell you about, though, is that I watched people who, along the way, as I mentioned earlier, some of the people who were higher up in the initiations were acting very arrogant and very uh, much in charge. I also experienced, as a practitioner, being treated like that I could be, I could put up with, like somehow I could put up with more crap. Now, this wasn't about Agape in particular, it was about some people who work there who don't work there anymore, treating me without the deference or, or the acceptance of the work I'd done. And it felt very, frankly, frustrating and very depleting, frankly. But I didn't lose faith, but I felt myself very challenged. And so I'm watching how this, this spiritual arrogance, or sp sorry, spiritual superiority, which I'm calling spiritual arrogance, was thrown back at me a different way. So I've been aware of many lessons, there's a lot more I'm gonna talk about here, but that's a couple of instances of where I was aware, where that spiritual superiority, bullshit, to use the word, was misplaced and doesn't work. And so the point I made at the beginning was the fact is that when people act spiritually superior or spiritually arrogant, it's because their ego thinks they're better than somebody else. And that isn't spiritual. So it's actually, a, it's actually a, um, not dichotomy, but it's basically a, um, like a double negative. No, I haven't got the word, it'll come back to me. But bottom line is, is that people who basically are doing the spiritual work, but then acting better than other people need to go back to the beginning. Because as I said earlier, to be spiritual for me means being humble. 
To be spiritual for me means being a resource. Being spiritual for me means being able to serve. So if you can serve and be humble and be, um, I lost the third one, <laughs> it'll come back. If you do those three things, then your spiritual path will be stronger, it'll be firmer, and it'll be less ego related, ego driven, ego invested. So what I wanna to speak to here is that it's okay to ask for help. I'm, and, and I wanna say this from this point of view, that yes, I've done all this work and I've been in a gap of 25 years, been a practitioner for 2019, excuse me. Um, on another spiritual path for 10 years before that, spiritual teaching for many, many years, but I still seek support. I'm working with, oh yes, those, those folks definitely gave me practice to tune in, be discerning, yes, Mary, exactly. And it, gave me, it also gave me a reminder that humility is a better place to be. I remember learning in a seminar back in the mid 80s where they were teaching, and it was one of the things I got as a teaching tool for myself, that, that true vulnerability is true strength that there's a definite um, understanding that when you are truly humble and vulnerable, you're almost infinitely strong because when you're that place, there's nothing to defend. And when you're defenseless, meaning no need to defend yourself, you actually have much more strength than those people who are busy building a shell of protection, they basically a house of cards. So there are people who are spiritual, and I mean, I'm not even getting into the whole religious stuff that's been going on in this country with the sexual, um, scandals and things with with people not doing the you know not not being in the place of humility and honorability and honorability in honor it's a big issue i talked last week week before about worthiness being in a default state of who we are and we just forget this is part of the challenge when you're doing this work is that you feel like somehow you got to keep doing the studies and doing this work to be worthy which is a mistaken approach i said this before and I say it again who you are as worthy is a default uh, being excuse me a default quality of who you already are but our ego, especially, that ego again, likes to distract us from that and make us feel unworthy because of something we did or didn't do. It's a challenge. And that leads me into something else. Okay, so let me see if I want to finish off that topic before I go there. Um, so, just to recap quickly, spiritual maturity, better than spiritual arrogance, for me, is understanding humility, is understanding service, and is understanding... Um, That was the other word. <laughs> it went out of my head. It'll come back. That spiritual place. So recommendation is, is that you always are a student. A true spiritual master is a perpetual student. So those people who get to a position of power, authority, or leadership where they think, okay, I'm resting my laurels now, they've given up the spirituality. And I'm being particularly blunt about that because I've seen it happen too many times and happened recently with some people I was talking to. And so for that spiritual arrogance, the word keeps sticking for me, it's a challenge. Now, part of, people, part of this is because some people do the spiritual work to avoid the human work. And this is another piece I want to give you. This is a bigger piece of the teaching. This is something I learned in my master's program because we talk about the spiritual level, but we also talk about the human level, which is physical, mental, and emotional that are independent of our spiritual being. So saying we're a spiritual being and have a human experience means that humanity is part of our makeup, part of what we're about. And some people do the spiritual work to avoid and pretend their humanity doesn't exist. And that's a mistaken approach. Because you can be very spiritually awakened, very spiritually aware, but still have trauma and challenge from your childhood still affecting your life. That's what happens. So if you don't get support on the human level, mental, emotional, spiritual, sorry, mental, emotional, and physical, you're missing out on opportunities to be more spiritual. I posted a, um, a link earlier, and I talked about yesterday, and I'll talk about it again today, is that, and this is something that I was talking about earlier, is that um, lots of stuff is coming in from this week. John Bradshaw, who's been around for many, many years, wrote many, many books about um, spirit, about hum, uh, psychology and therapy and everything else. He said, if you want to, if you, and I think he may have borrowed this from Ram Dass, by the way. I said this yesterday. But he says something about if you want to think you're, if you think, if you believe you're aware, go home for Thanksgiving. Because when people go back to their families for Thanksgiving, for the holidays, generally speaking, they forget to be spiritual because all the stuff comes up. I should say they forget how to be spiritual because the stuff comes up. Family dynamics, politics, challenge like that. And I posted a, a, a quote yesterday from a magazine article I was reading that some, the study back in 2018 said that 33% of people have extreme stress about going home for Thanksgiving because of the fact they can't be spiritual going back there because all their stuff comes up. 
in my coaching and in my work with my clients, a lot of what I do is actually do that stuff that's in the way so they can actually be more open to light, to love, to joy, to positivity, to spirituality, but it starts from doing the inner work first. So even though my work is relationship centric, it starts with your healing your relationship with yourself, which is on the human level, mentally, emotionally, especially. Something I put together because of the holidays and because I read, not because of the article, but I knew about this and the article just confirmed it, is, and I'm gonna put a link in the comments, you can check it out. I've got a course starting next Friday called Thriving Through the Holidays. It's a two month journey to basically give you a resource support when you go home for Thanksgiving, go home for Christmas, deal with New Year's stuff. If you're not in a relationship, if you are in a relationship, if you've got some issues going on, if you feel fine, it, for everybody. Um, it starts again next Friday. This weekend I have a couple of specials I promoted in on the page. I'll put the link, <clears throat> excuse me, I'll put a link in the comments so you can check it out and sign up if you want to do it. It is, um, it's taking, basically it's not just relationship centric, it's anything you need for support during the holidays. If you're going home to family and stuff is gonna come up, dip into the group for support. There'll be weekly group conversations, there'll be private support as well, and there'll be a lot of posts and things like that to get you through the holidays. So that's one of my gifts. This journey of spirituality is, is, it can be muddy at times, to be blunt. It's not necessarily an easy path, but the thing is when you try to be spiritual to avoid dealing with your human, you're missing the boat. I'm clear more than ever that the work I do with people on the human level helps them be more spiritual by default. So it's not about meditating 20 hours a, 20 hours a day, or 20 minutes a day, or 20 hours a day, or doing yoga for, you know, four times a week, five times a week, or praying, or eating healthy, or those different things. None of that is gonna make you spiritual on its own, especially if you don't deal with the human stuff first. So as I bring you back to the beginning, is that spiritual arrogance usually comes from a place of protection of the human stuff that's not resolved. And when people do that to me, I see through the I try to see through the facade of the spiritual superiority. So, if you're ready to drop that shell and you want to work through some stuff, reach out to me. Again, the link will be in the comments for this next two month journey starting on Friday. Next Friday, I invite you to come join me. It's going to be a fun little journey. And again, if you sign up this weekend, there's a special bonus I put on the web on the page. You can check it out. Um, it's worth investing in yourself. Do the work to heal your heart to heal your emotions, to heal your mental perspectives, and then you can be more spiritual almost effortlessly. Sort of, kind of. <laughs> I went a long way around to make a, make a point, but I hope you got the point that the message and went to make it clear for you. This is a piece of the puzzle that changes people's lives dramatically. It changed my life massively, um, more than once, actually, looking back. So if you want help, reach out, get support. Um, I thank you for watching. This is a Interesting topic, didn't plan on doing it today. I was in a conversation this afternoon. I was over at um, Mystic Journey Gallery, Crystal Gallery. So, hey Jessica, you've been feeling this lately. You want to be more present in your business, but you've been witnessed. You've, whoops. You've been, you've been witnessed. You've witnessed with spiritual arrogance. This topic is bringing into my awareness your fear that if you get recognition, you don't want to slip in spiritual arrogance. You want to be open, humble, and unjudgmental. Some subconscious beliefs to clear this so I can show up. You're very welcome. Yes, absolutely. And I'm glad, I'm, I'm glad Jessica, that made some sense to you because this is, this is a, a pivot point for some people. It's a big piece of the work. And I know my work's going to more, more into spiritual teaching, but it's got to, for me, have this under, underpinning of emotional and mental support as well. So come join me up next Friday. I'm, I mean, check it out today because the free gifts of this weekend, they go away on Monday. But at least sign up this weekend if you want to join in and jump in. Um, and again, link will be in the comments after I sign off, I'll post it in there. So if you haven't seen my broadcast before, <laughs> so again, links will be in the comments. That'll be in there. I may throw a couple of things in there as well um, because I'm like that. So I appreciate you watching. If you haven't seen my broadcast before, I do this every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time right here on my personal page, which is Barry Silby on Facebook. You can follow me here. If you want to see my replays, because I do have them every day, because this is number episode 890, 8, 891? Yeah, 891. Um, you can watch them on my business page on Facebook, which has most of them, not all of them, because Facebook doesn't show them all. But if you go to Barry Selby, the author, you can like my page and watch them there. If you want to see all of my broadcasts, because you want to binge watch the whole lot, you can do that too. You can go to my YouTube channel, which is Barry Selby, youtube.com slash user slash Barry Selby. And there's a playlist on there called Messages for the Masculine. Subscribe to my channel and you can watch all of them there. You can scan through for titles and search for keywords and get the help you want. Um, and don't just watch. If you feel you need the support, reach out, get support, message me of social media, check out the links I put in the comments and uh, get support. Be be able to, and say this, be willing to have the support so you can be as conscious, aware and alive as you wanna be. It's easier that way. 
I, I walk this path so I can help you walk the path too. Thank you for watching. I'll see you again tomorrow. Um, as always, take care of yourself. I'll see you again soon. Bye.